You want me to just liberal bash every day? I've done it for 20 years. It's boring. I invented liberal bashing. So why should I go on with it? I wrote liberalism as a mental disorder. Why should I go on with it? As you well know, the uh, big thing is this Saturday. Tonight is a stooge debate of some kind of town hall meeting. Who knows what it is with Hillary and the, the commie there. Who's going to watch that garbage? She's finished. And the thing is, we read that Trump may skip the Fox debate for his own town hall, which I've recommended for months now. I've said, I've said on the air, I don't call him up and say, hey, Donald, how are you? Enjoying the uh, meatloaf? I don't say that. I've said it on the radio. I assume he has people who listen to the radio. He knows what people are saying about him, as he should. He's running a presidential campaign. He knows that the socialists disguised as uh, Cruz supporters, crony socialists, uh, have been supporting Cruz. Now they've jumped ship and they're supporting Trump because they see which way the, the wind is blowing. And uh, he knows I've supported him from uh, the get-go because I know that he's the best for America. He's the only chance we have to save the country. Now we read that he may skip the Fox debate for his own town hall unless they dump her. Now, I said the same thing. What does he need these debates for? He is so far ahead that his absence would be a greater presence than his presence. That's all. There's a Britain First movement, which I didn't know existed until I found it on my own Facebook page. A listener posted it, and I could not believe there's such a group. There are Christian patrols in Muslim neighborhoods. They're marching through Muslim neighborhoods holding crosses. You should see the hate coming out of the Muslims who scream at them, it's our country, get out of our neighborhood. Yeah, these are big British guys. These are the British types that built Britain before the... I have such contempt for the vermin who've taken over the West, those suicidal liberals who've stolen Britain from the Brits, stolen America from the Americans. Well, anyway, there's a Britain First movement, and they're marching through Muslim neighborhoods with crosses, giving out newspapers. Naturally, the vermin in the media are calling them names like racist and whatnot. The real racists are the Muslims who scream, get out of our country, get out of our town. We'll take over your country. You cannot believe this. Britain first carries out Christian patrol and Islamist hotspot. This is good. They said this is a Christian country. The Muslims are screaming, get out of here. We're going to take over this country. We have a new report from the radio industry. Inside Radio has reported that afternoon drive is the king of radio time. I've always known that. It says radio stations have always made it a priority to corral listeners with strong morning drive shows that amp brand loyalty and ratings. It is, however, actually afternoon drive that draws the highest cum. The fact may not be a news flash to programmers, but the, anyway, I've known this since I began in radio. And then they, you know, they explain it. I happen to have an afternoon drive show. PM drive is 3 p.m. to well, till the show is over on the East Coast, noon on the West Coast, which is why I move my time to noon on the West Coast, which is a little bit of a stretch for my people on the West. They like to listen to me in the afternoon. And they say the audience drops dramatically after 6 p.m. on the East Coast. It drops to a very, very low amount, to an insignificant amount. People don't pay attention to it, which I've known also, by the way. Very interesting stuff. So I read this on Friday, No Man is an Island by John Donne, and I'll read it again. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, the part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. As well as if a promontory were. As well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. And that shows the connection, the interconnection between all of humanity. Everyone seems to know that, except extremists of the practitioner of the religion of pieces. They don't see themselves as part of humanity. They see humanity as garbage, filth, vermin to be killed, murdered, maimed in the most horrible ways. How can a world tolerate such an offshoot of humanity as this and disguise it as something to be accepted? How can Britain import people who see themselves as not only superior to the British while they're living on welfare, but something that will replace the British itself. How can they not throw them out of the country? How can we have a president who seems to side with the worst elements of humanity and attack the best elements of humanity? Going after... Oh, well, see, I was on a tear just now. i got to slow down. It's Monday. All right, here's a hot story. Mark Zuckerberg uh, of Facebook is back from paternity leave. 
That means about 50,000 workers will be fired so they can be replaced from H-1B visa workers from India at half the price. I mean, while he was away, they probably had a job. Now forget about it. Two months of paternity leave. His wife, Dr. Priscilla Chan, gave birth to the couple's first child, a daughter named Max, at the end of November. I got to pause here. Uh, let me let me put it in a nice way. I see all these celebrities having children, and they think that when they have a child, it's the first child ever born on earth. They think it's something divine, which is something normal, by the way, for parents. And they think that their child's going to be different than every other child ever born. Of the billions of children ever born, only their celebrity child will be different, smarter, better, brighter. Well, it can't happen statistically. And every time I see another celebrity in Hollywood who takes time out from snorting coke or using ecstasy or speed to clean up for a few months to have a child, and they go back to her wayward ways, I pity the poor child that she has. And I say to myself, yeah, get back to me when the child's 13. Then get back to me when the child's 16. What are they telling us to have this wonderful child for? What are they using as a new handbag that they just bought? Why don't they just raise the child instead of telling me about it? And who names a, ch a daughter Max and expects it to grow up like normal? You name your daughter Max, is like throwing a negative at her. Why don't you give her a girl's name? What, what do you mean Max? What's the name for his father? Who names a child a man's name? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Wasn't Obama's mother's name Stanley? Wasn't her mother's name Stanley? Something weird like that. How'd that work out for America? But the thing is, I mean, the, you know, there's such a thing as uh, evolution and oh, breaking down norms and everything's equal. That's wonderful. But let's look at the actual results. You know, let's look at the results of all these ideas. These ideas haven't really worked out that well. This idea of anarchy has it. I'm in a weird mood. Today's the cardiology day. Not a big deal. I understand it's only a dog. To you, it's like a turkey or a bird. Most of you don't care about animals. All right, I do. I'm a, I'm a bit odd like that. At night, I worry about animals, things like that. I think about where are they going, how do they live. I think of the swans. I think of the swallows. I think about how they f fly so far and what noble creatures they are. I think about those things like how does God create such a wonderful system such as this? You look at the, the, the animals that fly thousands of miles in, in a migration, and you look at the things flying over a mountain. This was done by a French cinematographer years ago. And you ask yourself, how in the world do these animals have such fortitude where they barely have the energy to get over the Himalayas on their migration? And you see them struggling. That French photographer, I don't know how he did this. I don't know if you ever saw this thing in National Geographic years ago. And they fly over the mountain. And they use the very last ounce of energy to get over that mountain. And some of them don't make it. They drop right out of the sky. Survival of the fittest, my friend. Now you say, what are you getting at, Michael? Should a society be based upon survival of the fittest? No. We have to take care of our weak. Those who are born disabled have to have help. We have to help the weak ones and the sick ones. But when we have 15 million Americans claiming disability, you know that those federal disability benefits are not going to the most needy. You know. You know how many billions of dollars a month are being sucked out by liars who are faking disability. Do you know how many phony immigrants come in here under asylum claims when there is no need for that asylum and they suck the system dry? You're telling me that that's what a sane society does and it doesn't crack down on these leeches and these parasites? So you want me to tell you that I don't know what's going on? I mean, I study nature. And I know societies are different than nature. Human societies are organized in many ways, but one of the things a human society does is make sure that those who are very, very sick or disabled are helped by the healthy people. That's a good thing. But what happens when you have leeches and parasites who use that disability to suck the system dry or use their sexuality to pretend that they're victims? Or use their immigrant status to claim that they're victims of racism, a term invented by the communists in order to shut everybody up. What do you do when you have a thing like that? You get a new president, and he cleans house, which is why the Republicans and the Democrats and the media hate Donald Trump. I'll be right back. First in the Savage Nation, 
if the Attorney General's office does not indict Hillary Clinton, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Tom DeLay said that the FBI will go ahead without the Attorney General's office and indict Hillary Clinton directly. They will blow the whistle on what she did, and they will go public with their findings, according to former U.S. House Majority Leader Tom DeLay. He went on and said they're ready to recommend an indictment, and they also say that if the Attorney General does not indict Hillary Clinton, they're going public. As you may know, Clinton is under FBI investigation for her use of a private server to conduct confidential governmental business while she was Secretary of State. Are you ready for this? However, how the Republicans say that any FBI recommendation that hurts Clinton will be squashed by the Obama administration? Once again, they're giving in in advance. The surrender monkeys in the Republican Party have given in in advance. But, Mr. DeLay said, one way or another, she's going to be indicted and that process begins, or we try her in the public eye with her campaign. One way or another, Hillary's going to have to face these charges. Now, what's strange here is that last week Clinton accused the Inspector General, Charles McCulloch, of colluding with Republicans to damage Clinton's campaign for president. The fact is, is that McCulloch is an independent appointed by both parties. It's crazy. But then we're living in Hillary Clinton's world. And if you want more of this, go ahead and vote for her. Filmmakers behind Planned Parenthood videos were just indicted. That came up on the Drudge Report just a few minutes ago. The Harris Grand Jury has indicted the filmmakers behind the Planned Parenthood videos. Do you know how sick this country is? Instead of inviting those who were selling baby body parts for a profit. They've indicted those who disclosed that they were selling baby body parts. Only in this corrupt nation could this happen. Videographers David Deleden and Sandra Merritt were both indicted on charges of tampering with a governmental record, a second-degree felony that carries a punishment of up to 20 years in prison. Now, if we lived in a nation where there was still a media... There would be screams from ABC, CBS, NBC, and, of course, MSNBC saying you may disagree with the videographers, but they are reporters, and they had every right to do this. But because MSNBC has now fallen to the level of Rachel Madcow, and there is no media anymore, they now attack the reporters instead of the baby killers. Can you believe this? Harris County DA Devon Anderson announced the surprising indictments today after a so-called two-month investigation. This is America today. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about two videographers, two reporters, being indicted for a crime that could put them in jail for 20 years, while the women who butcher and sell baby body parts for profit get to drink their wine in peace? Only in America. But then again, you're worried about who won the football game, and I'm not. This is the Savage Nation. Thanks for listening. Donald Trump tomorrow. Tell your friends. Go to Facebook. Michael Savage on Facebook with your questions. Savage.